the Bread Baking 101. Hey Michael, why does yeast make bread rise? Well you see, Emily, yeast is a type of living matter. It is a unicellular eukaryotic microorganism in the class of fungi. Yeast can actually become multicellular through specialized hyphae or into various molds. Yeast you put into your bread is in fact mold. The type of yeast used in baking bread is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is also the same type of yeast used in beer. When the yeast is mixed with sugars or other carbohydrates, it will begin to ferment the sugar, releasing carbon dioxide and small amounts of ethanol, which then produces bubbles. These bubbles create the fluffiness of the bread. If too much rising is done, the bread will be like too airy-ish, not very good. If not enough is done, it will be kind of like this here, tabletop, firm and stiff. Heat from the oven helps the yeast ferment even faster, but then they are quickly killed as the dry heat becomes too much for them to take. It's like me in Texas. Before the yeast dies, it puts into an extremely agitated state, which produces CO2 very rapidly, therefore causing the bread to rise. Now for the most important step in bread baking, sterilization. Now that we have heated the milk and the butter in the microwave until the butter has completely dissolved into the milk. Now we are about to add the butter and the milk solution into the salt, cinnamon, and sugar. Pour into the bowl and stir. Pour into the bowl. Now we are about to add the Kroger Active Dry Yeast to the 105 degree water. We will then mix the precipitate until it is completely dissolved into the solution. Now that the yeast has formed a solution with the water, I'm going to pour it into our other solution that's in this bowl. Now we are mixing in all the solutions together with two and a half cups of flour to help prep before we have to knead the dough in a few minutes. Okay, and now the fun part, kneading the dough, which just mixes all the ingredients together and gets it prepared for when we let it rise. Right as we speak, at this very moment, inside this oven, all kinds of crazy chemistry is going on. We have the yeast going through cell respiration right now, which is broken into three main stages. Glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and electron transport chain. All of these are implemented to help with the fundamental equation of glucose plus oxygen will yield carbon dioxide and water, which is a major role in the bread baking due to the carbon dioxide making the yeast in there, or the yeast compound, rise. This will also help with the energy inside of it to increase, which increases the respiration of the yeast cells, which gives them more energy to divide, conquer, make the yeast get bigger, our bread tastes better, and all this move happily.
now that after waiting for an eternity for what seems to be one of Mr. Craig's lecture videos, our yeast is finally done. Ooh, Yay! look at that. It's all grown and oh yeah. Okay, so Michael just took the dough that just rose out of the oven and he pressed it down on the bowl to get it flattened. Now I am kneading it for the second time to get it all re-floured because there is grease on it. And so it's ready to roll with the cinnamon. Okay, now I'm rolling out the dough into a square-like shape so that we can put in the filling. Now, in order to make the filling, I'm going to cut two tablespoons of butter off of the stick as indicated by its measurements using this here steak knife. <laughs> now, I'll quickly run over and place the butter onto the bread. Oh, it's not going to work. Wait, now that I took the stick of butter and used my magical zapping powers, used by the microwave, I've made it into a liquid so it actually rolls off on the dough. of two tablespoons of regular sugar, one tablespoon of brown sugar, and one tablespoon of cinnamon. And now we're just going to sprinkle it onto the butter so that it sticks onto the dough. Okay, cut it off. Hello, I said cut it off. Alright, now we're just going to roll it up like a burrito. Very carefully. Oh, it's getting sticky. Alright, now we're just buttering the sides of the pan so that the dough doesn't stick to the sides. Okay, I just placed the rolled up dough into the pan that I just buttered the sides of. And now I'm putting it in a warm place. I'm putting it by the oven since it's kind of warm since we're preheating it. And now I'm putting a towel over it. I'm chilling out with our lovely Qdoba-like burrito that is full of, now, sugar, brown sugar, and cinnamon, which is hopefully going to get a little bit bigger before we toss it in the grand old oven here to make our cinnamon bread that you guys will hopefully be enjoying if it's not a total failure. And the oven's preheated. We're good to go. Now that our yeast bread has been sitting for about 30 minutes, we're going to unveil it and realize that our Qdoba burrito got fatter. It's grown! Yay! Due to the uh, yeast cells multiplying from the cell respiration. Now before we throw it in the oven for the final bake of it, we're going to cut three slits in it because the recipe really told us to. Don't make them too big. It'll be okay. This will also help the bread to breathe while cooking. Okay. Time to say bye bye to our lovely Qdoba like burrito and toss them in the oven for 35 minutes. Bye! bye. Our bread has just come out of the oven and been sitting for about a second. So we decided to cut it up to let you guys all in on what it pretty much looks like. And it seems to appear like a cinnamon roll. That you can still see it. And it looks absolutely delectable. By all means. Of just about everything. Except for that one. That one got destroyed. But we'll, we'll just go back to this one. This looks pretty good. <laughs> Pinterest grade material. So Taylor, how does it taste? Oh, it's blessed. Okay, great. Thanks for the feedback. You're the best. Mmm. <laughs> so tasty.